Orlando Sarraf Trujillo, also known as Roly, a man who went from one prison to another. To every story there are at least two sides, and Roly's story has two sides at least. One is the government's version. The other one is the truth. Now, most people believe the government's side of the story, and it's not a mystery why this is so. The first reason is a given. You can't handle the truth! Another reason is that the official version is printed in every newspaper in the country, shown throughout the media and every TV station. Most people never even learn that there is an alternative version. There's a structural type of censorship built into the media. The truthful version is for researchers, historians, people who might be interested in knowing exactly what happened. Handful of people. The majority of people simply accept the official version. Then there's also a practical reason. The politicians need to steer the masses in one direction or the other. Imagine if the Democrats or the Republicans wanted to attain power. Would they be concerned about the truth? In fact, I cannot imagine a politician who would survive by telling the truth. But in this day and age of uh, YouTube and Internet, it's sometimes insufficient to simply ignore an alternative version. You have to go after the individual. You have to destroy the character of the witness. You have to kill the messenger. One site says, I trust Gady as far as I can throw him. Another site says, Needless to say, we believe the President of the United States over a former double agent like Gady. And Pepe Cohen himself, an individual who will be called upon to vouch for his friend Roley when Roley is released, is already preparing the road ahead. Bill Gady is not a credible source. Bill Gady is a malicious liar. What Bill Gates says has no credibility. None of these sources speak very highly of me. But what evidence have they put forth to back up their claims that would stand in a court of law? That's what I'm going to do here. I'm not going to try to ask you to believe me. I'm going to ask you to look at the objective evidence, evidence that would stand in a court of law, and make up your own mind about who's lying. Pepe has told at least three major lies in public, which I will expose here. He stated to the Miami Herald that his wife and Roly were not part of the subversive cell that he and I formed to channel information to the CIA. He stated to the New York Times that he never sold information. And he stated to Miami TV stations that he worked for the CIA from within Cuba at least since 1990. So let's go with the first one, where Pepe claims that his wife Lazara and Roli had nothing to do with our cell. I introduce Exhibit A, Cuba Confidential Report, dated May 27, 2012. It reads in its relevant part, Jose Cohen Valdez, in 1994, convinced Lieutenant Rolando Roli Sarraf Trujillo, a colleague assigned to Department M15, Agent Communications, to steal information and give it to him for passage to the CIA. Next, I introduce Exhibit B. This is a picture of Lázara Brito González. You will find pictures of her made by independent sources on the internet to verify my claim. Here's one published by the New York Times in the year 2000. Lázara sent this picture to identify herself with the CIA in case of an extraction operation to help her escape from the island. 
The person next to her is Maria Victoria de Bernard, the courier who came to the United States to bring messages from Pepe, Rolli, and Lázara, and which I forwarded to the CIA. Why do I have this picture of Lázara if she was not part of our cell? Why is she obviously identifying herself with this photo the same way that Pepe is in this one? Now I introduce Exhibit C. These are letters written to me and sent together with sensitive intelligence information to the CIA in March of 1993. The letters are now uploaded to the Internet. In identifying himself, Rody writes his address and phone number. He writes that, Our wives know that we work through you and support us unconditionally. Roli's wife's name is Maria Luisa Hernandez, also known as Malusi. His mother-in-law has the same name. This is a picture of her, and that's Roli's son, the little guy in the middle. This picture was also forwarded to the CIA. Now why would I know such details if Roli wasn't involved with our cell? Is Pepe suggesting that I was involved with two independent cells within Cuba that didn't know each other? Roly writes, You can be totally sure that the performance of our friends CIA, FBI with you is in response to an operational logic that is always applied in similar situations and circumstances. We are of the opinion that you must immediately reestablish personal communications with the brothers because to do the contrary is to sow doubts. It's not sufficient with the information we can supply. Once again, that note came together with the letters of Pepe and Lázara in an organizer in March of 1993. Now I introduce Exhibit D. This is the FBI report introduced in my federal trial under Rule 16, Discovery and Inspection. This report is a public document and I have uploaded it to the Internet. The report states in its relevant part. Since 1989, Gady has established a close personal relationship with Pepe and one Carlos, who is not further identified, but also affiliated with the DI. 
These two individuals have experienced a complete philosophical reversal to the extent that they no longer support the Cuban Revolution. They are disaffected with the Cuban government and have decided to work to promote its downfall. They have reached out to the United States government through Gaiti, requesting support in the form of money and equipment for their efforts to accelerate the disintegration of the Cuban government. I have already established in a previous video that Roli was also known as Carlos, but here it is again. When you originally gave us uh, the name of the second fellow, you referred to him as Carlos. His name is Rolando Serraf. Okay, that was, that was what I was trying to do. What is the last name? S-A- And finally, I introduce into evidence Exhibit E, the meeting in which two unidentified CIA agents, FBI Special Agents James King of the San Antonio Division and Special Agent John Graham from the Phoenix Division, discuss Pepe, Roli, and Lazara. The discussion shows clearly that the FBI did not believe in these three individuals as late as March 1993. Obviously, you made very valid questions. Kind of a doubt of Dr. Lowe. Everything seems to be kind of coincidental. It's not that we're doubting these guys. We still believe firmly that, you know, we believe because of many details, okay? But we can under. Well, right. We began to put ourselves. Give this 
information. Why don't you just write something important here? Why don't you write a hundred things that were important if, you, if you're going to come out in the open? It is clear from all these records that Roly and Lazara were part of the team. Let's now move on to number two. Pepe told the New York Times a couple weeks ago that he never sold information. To the New York Times reporter, Pepe insisted that neither he nor Mr. Seraf ever sold information. What I did, I did because I admired the values of this country. However, two years ago, in a Cuba Confidential article, we read a different, heroic story of adventure, the stuff of Hollywood. According to a former DIM-6 officer, after Saraf Trujillo started passing files, Cohen began indiscreetly spending the considerable cash the CIA paid for Saraf Trujillo's treasure trove of intelligence. In short order, the two men came under surveillance. Cohen reportedly noted the surveillance and had his brother-in-law signal the CIA station in Havana for an emergency extraction. Cuban counterintelligence videotaped his brother-in-law's assistance for which he was subsequently jailed. Cohen and the second individual successfully escaped despite the extensive counterintelligence coverage. Saraf Trujillo was arrested and sent to prison. So, which is it? 
was Pepe furtively whisked out of Cuba by the CIA through Guantanamo and Roly end up in prison because they were discovered spending the large amounts of money the CIA gave them? Or did Pepe have to escape by raft because the CIA never believed in him? There is an obvious contradiction in these two versions. Now, Pepe might argue today that he wasn't the guy who broke the story to Cuba Confidential. Assuming this is true, it shows first that what Cuba Confidential prints is rubbish. Why should you put any more weight on a story about Rolando Sarraf being an expert in cryptography? Why should you believe this story of Cuba Confidential is on record as printing a big fat lie in the past? But then where did the story about Roli and Pepe working together and spending money and being detected by Cuban counterintelligence originate, if not in Pepe himself? Who else would know such details but him? The fact remains that Pepe never denied the story or asked Cuba Confidential to edit it or remove it from its site. Let's now show that the third claim that Pepe makes is also false. Specifically, I'm going to show that, pursuant to his own testimony, Pepe made contact with the CIA through me. He also claims that he worked with the CIA within Cuba at least since 1990. However, I did not make contact with the CIA until July of 1992. Therefore, his claim that he had worked for the CIA within Cuba since 1990 is false. Pero cuando ellos regresan a Estados Unidos, Ninosca, ellos entran en contacto con la CIA, ¿ok? A petición mía. Desde ese tiempo, yo establezco un canal de comunicación con el gobierno. Por eso es que hay gente que me ponen a mí que yo trabajo para la inteligencia cubana. Bueno, yo no sé si trabajo para la inteligencia cubana o para la CIA dentro de Cuba. La realidad es esa. Trabajaron a los norteamericanos dentro del corazón. Bueno, yo sí. ¿Por cuántos años tú trabajaste? En contra del los... régimen dentro de Cuba, por cuatro o cinco años. At Pepe's request, Gady visited the Central Intelligence Agency CIA headquarters on July 13, 1992 to present their proposal and request support in their work against the Cuban government. Pepe and Carlos provided a large volume of passage material to be utilized by Gady in establishing their bona fides. According to Gady, this information was hand copied by Pepe and Carlos and then cut into small stripes and packaged in a way that would fit into Gady's photography bag. Gady then brought the material out of Cuba in June of 1992 through Jose Marti Airport without incident. Therefore, Pepe's claim that he had worked for the CIA within Cuba since 1990 is false. He could have at best worked with or for the CIA since 1992. If we now factor that the CIA did not believe in Pepe or Roli up until March of 1994, we conclude that Pepe never worked for the CIA or contributed to the CIA while he was in Cuba. Whatever that may be, these guys know that. They make a 
contact through you with us or the agency. There are established, accepted ways of doing it. Uh, what they'll find about these operations that have to fit, they don't have to fall into place. We don't care whether the motivation is money or it's a theological motivation. That's not important. Once you put your hand on that, there are still other things that you've got to identify. I am not satisfied with these two people. Let's do it again. I think you have communicated your concern to us. Well, maybe there's a couple of things that I have not finished. We're concerned about them. Therefore, Pepe lied when he said that Lazar and Roli were not members of PR2. He lied when he spread the fable that he received money from the CIA while in Cuba. And he lied when he said that he worked for or with the CIA since 1990. Pepe replies that you should believe him because he is backed by FBI and CIA agents. Indeed, According to the Miami Herald, an FBI agent portrayed him as a bona fide defector, and a CIA agent said that the agency considers Cohen legitimate. Whether Cohen is today a bona fide defector and provided useful information after he was out is not in question. It is not even an issue. The issue before us is whether Cohen lied about what he did on the island before he came out. The FBI and the CIA agents that vouch for Pepe certainly know nothing about that. The question that a serious researcher would ask at this point is why is Pepe Cohen lying? And why is President Obama lying when he says that Rolando Sarraf Trujillo was a cryptographer that aided United States in the capture of Ana Montes and the Myers. This is what I'll be addressing in the coming videos.